Welcome everybody. I'm uh, David Eichels with David Richard Gallery here in New York City. Uh, we're located at 211 East 121st Street in uh, East Harlem. And uh, tonight we're having a, a panel discussion in the gallery and uh, behind us uh, is the work we'll be discussing, <coughs> which is by artist uh, Leo Valador. And we'll give a little bit of a background about Leo and, and uh, open it up to questions to people here in the audience. And um, <clears throat> so what I'd like to do though right now is introduce our panelists and, and as usual, we'll keep these sort of casual and you know, people should feel free to ask questions and, and you guys chime in whenever you want. Um, so to the right of me is Alex Bacon. He's an art historian, a critic and a arts writer. Um, he lives here in New York City and, um, and he's uh, approached us uh, about Leo's work because he's very interested in um, minimalism and uh, painting and painters and so uh, he's covered a number of people uh, here in town and he's you know, always working on new projects so he approached us and uh, I asked him if he'd participate in this panel I thought his perspectives and his knowledge of other artists would be very interesting and, and uh, give some interesting and different insights into Leo as you know we're always trying to uh, Leo's passed away a number of years ago back in 1989 um, but we're always trying to find people who uh, knew Leo, have done a lot of research, and uh, be able to kind of get more behind the work, uh, sort of what he was thinking and, and uh, <clears throat> different motivations. Uh, and we'll cover some of the work and the, uh, the breadth of the work and what have you tonight. And then further down is Peter Reginato. He's an artist here in New York. He moved here, well, he's also from California, met Leo um, in uh, San Francisco. So Leo uh, was a painter and uh, was uh, from the Fillmore District in, um, in San Francisco. So he grew up and was part of that early uh, beat uh, scene in San Francisco, which is this whole fusion of, um, which is probably a good word that I think describes a lot of just the essence of Leo, which is fusion. And, uh, and we'll sort of touch a little bit more on that as we go along, but uh, it was a fusion of, of uh, jazz and uh, poetry and, and art. And, and so uh, he was part of all of that uh, back at that time, which was very interesting. And he was also had the great fortune in, in being at the California School of Fine Arts, which is now the Art Institute of San Francisco, of being around a host of very other interesting painters and artists, many of whom uh, they all moved here to New York, a bunch of them in the 60s. But he was able to study with some really amazing people and uh, uh, Clifford Still and uh, Frank Lobdell and, um, and then, of course, you know, you had uh, Rothko and people from New York who had come out. So he was uh, inspired by and, uh, and, and learned from uh, a lot of the masters and people who we all, you know, know and admire and respect today. But Leo, uh, along with Dean Fleming and a lot of his other friends, uh, Mark DeSouvro from the Bay Area and, and Peter, ended up moving to New York in the early 1960s. And he became a founding member of the Park Place Gallery was a, a group of uh, 10 artists, the founding members, and uh, five painters and five sculptors. And, uh, <clears throat> and what sort of held them together was uh, um, not too dissimilar from what was happening in San Francisco in the beat scene. They sort of brought that flavor with them, which was um, jazz and poetry and, uh, and art, but they sort of brought in a different element from poetry. It was a little, really a bit more on um, performance. And it was a, a place, where they really wanted people to coalesce. They wanted it to be sort of a nucleus and a, at a point, a place for people to aggregate and, uh, and really see what new cutting edge work was happening and very experimental work uh, here in New York. And that was really their impetus. Well, you can see the San Francisco Art Institute kind of influence in some very, very broad general way with the space and color which is like you look at this painting right here, this red one, and where that line is sort of, you could almost imagine it hooking up into a triangle, but it stops and it could be behind it. Mm -hmm. And I see it in a few of the paintings, not all of them, but something that I, I, I don't know what to call it, some kind of uh, uh, strange cubist, cubist idea mm. about a space that everyone would maybe start to imply it and then somehow cut it off so it never quite went there, yeah. but you could go there, sort of. Yeah. Well, Dan Graham, when he had his gallery, did a show of the Park Place Arts, which mm -hmm. I didn't realize before researching for this panel. And I, you know, 
he has pieces by all those you know artists in his own collection i mean so it just goes to show you that these conversations were much broader than maybe art history has written them to be and i think we're starting you know to understand that and i think it's why it's good to have shows of work like this because i think a younger generation such as myself comes and sees this work and immediately sees both its distinction but also its relationship to mm -hmm you know, these better known names. And each one's very different in how much, you know, it all comes down really when you think about it, uh, how much tension he creates between imbalance and color and, and how reductive he is or in his uh, methodology and how much, how, how, how much you have an active imagination.